All right, so we're just going to use the ambient microphone in the room. Okay, so for, first off, uh, so going back to my discussion, like why would you incompl uh, include compression steel anyways? Well, the first reason is that compression steel is generally there anyways. And the easiest way to explain that is to skip ahead a little bit. So I'm, I'm skipping ahead and I'm showing you the shear notes. This is typically what the reinforcement pattern in a reinforced concrete beam would look like anyways. So you have your tensile reinforcement, let's say, on the bottom, and then you've got these sort of hoops that have been drawn around, the, uh, that are drawn around the beam, uh, and these hoops are primarily there to resist shear. We call those, we have a name for them, we call them stirrups, okay? And so when we go into shear uh, design later, we're going to talk about how to lay out those stirrups. And so, spoiler alert, you'll see how there's more stirrups near the support than there is in the middle because it's like shear. You know, there's more shear on the outside or near the supports than there is in the middle. But the idea is, okay, I've got this tensile reinforcement on the bottom and I've got all these stirrups uh, along the beam. And so generally it's common to throw a few bars in up top to tie the whole thing together, to tie what we call the rebar cage uh, together. So why would you include uh, uh, doubly reinforced, like why would you include compression steel in your analysis? Because it's generally there anyways. Um, it's generally there to tie together the, um, uh, to, to tie together the, um, the, the, uh, uh, all of the rebar inside the, uh, inside the section. So the first reason is, is that it's there. The second reason is this isn't really going to make a lot of sense now, but it will later. Um, adding compression steel gives you a benefit later in regards to long-term deflection. So when we look at deflection performance in um, reinforced concrete beams, we'll end up looking at two things. We'll look at the deflection immediately or instantaneous deflection. So I take a load, I put it on a beam, how much does it deflect? And that'll be a value that we compute. But one of the things about concrete is that its property changes over time. Over time, concrete creeps. It undergoes shrinkage. It undergoes all sorts of different material phenomena. And so the thing is with a concrete beam, if I put a load on it and I let it sit there for 15, 20, 30 years, that deflection changes over time. So we're going to look at not only immediate or instantaneous deflections, but we'll look at long-term deflections. And so putting compression steel in a concrete beam actually improves your uh, long-term deflection performance. And you'll see that, uh, how it does that uh, later. But, so I, I want you to know that there's a reason why we're looking at, uh, why we're looking at it in this fashion. Now, the way that we determine the capacity of a doubly reinforced uh, concrete beam uh, is very similar to how we compute the capacity of a true T-beam. So you know how when we did a true T-beam, we split it up and we said, here's the capacity of the flange couple, and here's the capacity of the web couple, and we just add them up. Well, we do the same thing uh, for uh, doubly reinforced beam. We'll have, you know, a 0.85 FC prime AB compressive force here, and then we'll have a compressive force here with this deal. So, you know, we'll have a compressive force times D minus A over 2, and then a compressive force times this moment arm. And how far is it from this steel to that steel? Well, it's D minus this D prime, which brings up some notation uh, introductions with uh, doubly reinforced beams you're going to start to see some primes show up in a lot of our uh, computations. So, for instance, let me skip ahead a bit. So if you look here, I've got, you know, a, a reinforced concrete beam, and notice I've got two D values now. I've got D, but then I have D prime. I've got an area of steel, but then I've got an area of steel prime. Anytime that you see a prime, it's related to something in compression. It's kind of like why it's FC prime, okay, because it's the compressive uh, strength. So, D prime, so D is from the top to the tensile steel, D prime is from the top to the compression steel. The, area, the AS prime is the area of the compression steel. Area, uh, A sub S is the area of the tensile steel. Everybody okay with that? Now, so, so the way that we compute the capacity is going to be pretty easy. What's going to be challenging is this part right here. Okay? Um, when we perform our analysis, we always assume that the tensile steel yields, that this steel on the bottom yields. And remember, we also have a limit that the steel um, has to have a strain greater than or equal to 0 0.004. That's sort of our way of enforcing that this steel has to yield. But I'm not talking about this steel. I'm talking about this one. Okay? It is very possible that in the analysis of a doubly reinforced concrete beam that the compression steel 
does not yield. Okay, and so it not yielding can actually create some complications on equilibrium. Like what's what's equilibrium? Like how, how do we determine where the neutral axis is such that c equals t? So I'll sort of introduce what we do uh, uh, now. We'll, we'll close this up next time. But basically what we do is we compute the strain in this steel. How do we compute the strain? Well, 0 0.003 is to C as whatever this is to C minus that D prime. So we compute the strain in the steel and we compare it to the strain of yielding. It might yield. It might not. Okay. And so if it yields, I'll go ahead and tell you, if it yields, the analysis is a little, is a little easier. If it does not yield, it's a little bit more involved. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll handle both cases and we'll have two different examples, spoiler alert, one where it yields, one where it doesn't, and we'll show you how the analysis uh, and how the math changes if the steel does not yield. Because you'd be surprised how, how little variations can change what ends up happening. Okay, that's all I have everybody. I will see you all next time.